Hello, world. Welcome, I am your host Mr. Stag. Do you know what company holds all your medical records? Today we will be taking a deep dive into Epic Systems Corporation. Epic is a privately held healthcare software company. An Epic is a glorious recounting of a nation's events. Like the Iliad or the Odyssey, the electronic health records chronicle the story of a patient's healthcare over time. According to the company, hospitals that use its software held medical records of 54% of patients in the United States and 2.5% of patients worldwide. Originally headquartered in Madison, Wisconsin, Epic moved its headquarters to a large campus in the suburb of Verona, Wisconsin in 2005, where it employs more than 10,000 people as of 2021. The campus has themed areas, buildings, such as a castle-like structure, a wizard campus, that appears to be inspired by J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter, and a dining facility designed to mimic a train station. Judith R. Faulkner, born August 1943, is an American billionaire, founder and CEO of Epic Systems. Faulkner loved tackling tough problems since she was a kid growing up near Haddonfield, New Jersey, in the 1950s. In seventh grade, her math teacher put riddles on the blackboard, and she's been hooked on math and logic ever since. She majored in math at Dickinson College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and had a summer job in particle physics at the University of Rochester, where she was introduced to computer programming and Fortran, the ancient coding language invented by IBM. Faulkner's parents inspired her early interest in healthcare. Her father, Louis, was a pharmacist and her mother, Dell, was the director of Oregon Physicians for Social Responsibility. In 1965, she started a doctorate in the University of Wisconsin's nascent computer science program. In Madison, she met psychiatrist and professor Warner Slack, who was teaching one of the first ever courses on computers in medicine. A few years later, Slack introduced Faulkner to John Grist, then chief resident in medicine and now professor emeritus at the University of Wisconsin, who was looking for a better way to schedule on-call doctors. In 1969, Faulkner developed a system in which a secretary could punch data cards to generate the schedule for an entire year in 18 seconds at a cost of $5. Faulkner graduated without completing a dissertation and in the early 1970s started working for a physician's group at the University of Wisconsin, developing a database to keep track of patient information over time. It would take a few more years, and lots of convincing from colleagues, before Faulkner was ready to start her own software company. In 1979, shortly after receiving her master's degree, Faulkner co-founded Human Services Computing, with Dr. John Greist. Human Services Computing, which later became Epic Systems, began in her basement at 2020 University Avenue in Madison, Wisconsin. The company was started with $70,000 investment from friends and family, but the company has never taken investment from venture capital or private equity and remains a privately held company. In fact, Faulkner prides herself in the fact that Epic is homegrown. They have never acquired another company and Faulkner has stated they will never go public. In 2013, Forbes called her the most powerful woman in healthcare. Forbes estimates Faulkner's 47% stake in Epic to be worth $6 billion, which makes her the second richest self-made woman in America. Employees, family, other co-founders, and initial investors own the other 53%. Epic primarily develops, manufactures, licenses, supports, and sells a proprietary electronic medical record software application, known in whole as Epic, or an Epic EMR. The company's healthcare software is centered on its Chronicles database management system.
EPIC's applications support functions related to patient care, including registration and scheduling, clinical systems for doctors, nurses, emergency personnel, and other care providers, systems for lab technologists, pharmacists, and radiologists, and billing systems for insurers. EPIC also offers cloud hosting for customers that do not wish to maintain their own servers, and short-term optimization and implementation consultants through their wholly owned subsidiary Boost, Inc. EPIC's suite of offerings has proven particularly popular among large academic medical centers and children's hospitals, such as the Cleveland Clinic, Johns Hopkins and Boston Children's Hospital. The company's 564 customers represent nearly 2,400 hospitals worldwide and 225 million patients in the U.S., or about two-thirds of the country's population. This translated into more than $3.3 billion in revenue in 2020, despite what Faulkner estimates to be around $500 million in foregone revenue for COVID-related software it provided free of charge, including infection management tools and extensions for pop-up hospitals. Epic was still just a $500 million sales company in 2007. In 2011, it hit $1 billion in revenue, and growth has compounded at an annual rate of 15% every year since. It is highly profitable company, estimated cash flow as measured by EBITDA is north of 30%, and the company has no debt. In 2019, Epic had a 39% share of the more than 880,000 hospital beds in the U.S., the healthcare IT firm KLAS Research Estimates. The rest of the market is fragmented among publicly traded Cerner, the Massachusetts-based Meditech and a few other firms, including Allscripts and CPSI. Epic's dominance has made it an industry target, with critics and competitors accusing the company of being a closed network that makes it difficult to exchange data with other systems. Faulkner contends Epic does share data but puts patient privacy above all. Despite the positive growth Epic Systems has encountered issues domestically and internationally with its software. In 2016, Danish health authorities spent 2.8 billion Danish krone on the implementation of EPIC in 18 hospitals in a region with 2.8 million residents. On May 20, EPIC went live in the first hospital. Doctors and nurses reported chaos in the hospital and complained of severe under-preparation and training. EPIC and its Danish partners insisted that normal testing and training were carried out. Since some elements of the EPIC system were not properly translated from English to Danish, physicians resorted to Google Translate. As one example, when inputting information about a patient's condition, physicians were given the option to report between the left and the correct leg, not the left and right legs. As of 2019, EPIC had still not been fully integrated with Denmark's National Medical Records System, which is meant to be accessed every time a patient is seen. Danish anesthesiologist and computer architect Gert Gulster worked to adapt the system. According to Gulster, these EPIC systems were designed specifically to fit the U.S. healthcare system, and could not be disentangled for use in Denmark. An audit of the implementation that voiced concerns was published in June 2018. At the end of 2018, 62% of physicians expressed they were not satisfied with the system and 71 physicians signed a petition calling for the system to be removed. Epic's biggest strength, this build it alone mentality, could become its biggest liability in the post-COVID world. The pandemic is forcing fast change in the U.S. healthcare system. Doctors and other providers have rapidly adopted new technology over the last year as patients suddenly took a strong interest in staying as far away from the hospital as possible. Venture capitalists were already gunning for Epic before the pandemic struck. 
After all, the company's big system mindset and $100 million installations seem out of step in the era of cloud computing and cheap, ubiquitous mobile apps. Then, shortly before lockdown, the U.S. government finalized new federal data sharing rules empowering patients to have ownership over their own digital medical records, potentially further eroding what has historically been a health data oligopoly dominated by Epic and Cerner. Nearly every other tech company, including Cerner, Apple, Microsoft and Google, disagreed, arguing that Epic's stance is bad for patients and stifles innovation. Even federal officials took veiled digs at Faulkner's business. In the end, the feds prohibited health care data blocking by Epic or any other company. The new federal rules concern individual patient records, but the industry is rapidly heading toward aggregating bulk data. It's a space in which many, including Epic, want to play. These large, anonymous medical data sets can be used for everything from drug discovery to unearthing emerging national health trends and could be worth a lot of money. In 2019, Epic unveiled a big data initiative called Cosmos, which aims to mine more than 100 million de-identified patient records. Despite being just 28 months shy of her 80th birthday, Faulkner says she has no plans to retire. She has not named a successor, and none of her three children works at Epic. Faulkner has secured Epic's future only insofar as the company will never be taken public. She has split her stock into voting shares that can't be sold and have gone into a trust controlled by family members and employees. Her non-voting shares are being left to a foundation she established with her husband called Roots and Wings, which funds her interests in child brain development and criminal justice reform. She signed the Giving Pledge in 2015. Epic's software is ubiquitous in doctors' offices and operating rooms, and companies like Amazon, Microsoft and Alphabet regularly hoover up its young engineers. Yet most people have never heard of the company. Epic Systems now holds the medical records of over 200 million people. 32% of operating expenses is invested into R&D. Epic's applications handle functions both complex and straightforward, from the emergency room to the bills sent to patient homes. They calibrate drug dosages, monitor vital signs, match blood types, anticipate infection symptoms, and keep tumor measurements. Epic software is elemental to everything from transplants to cesarean sections. Ms. Faulkner has instructed her heirs, she has three children, and stockholding employees, who together constitute a majority of the company's equity holders, that they must always vote their shares in favor of keeping Epic private. They must also ensure that Epic is run by an executive who already works for the company, and that that person is a software developer. Tell us what you think about the future of Epic Systems in the comments section below. Mr. Stag logging off.